Everybody, thank you all for joining uh, the call today with Ema and myself. Uh, we have it scheduled for an hour. Uh, we don't want to take everybody's time, but we really appreciate uh, you joining us. Emer obviously is a city councillor who was co-opted uh, to replace me on Dublin City Council and uh, when I was appointed to the Senate by the Taoiseach Michelle Martin and both of us at the moment are the elected representatives for Fianna Fáil in Dublin Central and uh, we wanted to share on this call today uh, some of the work that we're doing um, on behalf of the people of Dublin Central and the community and I suppose both at a local level but also at a government level. So we've prepared a, a presentation based on I suppose what we think are uh, what we know are the issues that people have been asking us about in recent times uh, while obviously COVID has uh, prevented both of us and, and everybody I guess from meeting physically uh, we have both continued obviously to work away um, City Council has gone online the Oroctus most of our work has gone online and um, these are issues that we are both working on and issues that the party is supporting and championing in government and at city council and that are current and, and will be for the future in, in Dublin Central big development projects. So we pulled the, the agenda together based on what people have been asking us about. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with the regeneration projects um talk about moore street and daily mount the fruit and vegetable market the city library mount joy square the five lamps uh, housing is obviously a huge issue i'm Fianna Fáil spokesperson for housing and i'm going to talk around what we've been doing in housing and, and where we want to go with our housing uh, plans for the future metrolink is a huge infrastructure project uh, for the city but is, is going to have significant impact in, in Dublin Central and then we want to open it up for, for questions and answers so as Neve said the, the call is being recorded and anybody who has any questions if they want to put them into the chat uh, and we'll, we'll deal with them then at the end. Um, so let's talk about the regeneration. Uh, Daily Mount Park is in the heart of Fibsborough to the rear of the uh, shopping center there. Over six years ago, uh, Dublin City Council acquired it. Progress has been painfully slow uh, with the redevelopment of uh, the soccer stadium. But thankfully, um, our most recently uh, government awarded uh, 1 million euros, just short of 1 million euros to Dublin City Council to progress the redevelopment to uh, appoint a design team that will design out uh, a new uh, 60,000 or 6,000 capacity stadium. Um, there will also be a community facility in it, which is really badly needed uh, in Fibsborough, a community space with meeting rooms. And uh, it, it obviously will continue to be home to soccer, but we see it as having huge potential for other cultural activities as well. And I suppose the big thing is, is it's going to trigger or, or certainly be a big part of the regeneration of Fibsborough as one of our prime urban villages. There's also money has been allocated for improvements on the Royal Canal um, and Broadstone. Sorry, Mary, you're on mute. Okay, was I on mute the whole time? No, you weren't. No, you aren't, sorry. That was my fault, Mary, apologies. Go ahead, just the last 10 seconds. Okay, so so I, I suppose just finishing up on, on, on Daily Mountain, Fibs, Fibsborough obviously is a prime urban village for the city, but for us in Dublin Central, it's uh, one of our oldest villages. It has been sadly neglected, uh, but the investment in Daily Mount will be a real catalyst for regeneration along with investment in, in the Royal Canal and the shopping centre development, while that's in private ownership and is a private development, uh, planning permission has been granted there and that should hopefully uh, bring about a new and regenerated uh, shopping centre and, and village uh, for us in Fibsborough. The next regeneration project um, is the fruit and veg market. And again, it's one that's been spoken about, it's the fruit and veg market down in, in Mary's Lane, um, behind the four courts there, uh, has been spoken about for years. It's a building that I always argue that if we were to try to build today, we wouldn't be able to afford to build it. Um, 
it's a beautiful building, a beautiful structure. If any of you have ever been in it, it was a wholesale fruit and vegetable market. Funding has now been allocated to City Council to reopen it as a market. Uh, Emer is working obviously with City Council on that. And the, the concept is that it would be reopened, but not as, as a wholesale market, as a retail market, but also with cultural space in it, but also eating, uh, you know, cooked food. There's huge potential for it. Uh, not just for retail, but I think also for uh, food, entertainment. And it's a really exciting project and one that I'm delighted uh, government found the funding to support Dublin City Council to uh, commence. As part of the 121 million uh, in urban regeneration funding for the North Inner City, government has also supported Dublin City Council to move forward with the proposal for a city library on Parnell Square, on the north side of Parnell Square. So here, these are the old Colosse de Wera buildings. This is an artist's impression. This is not the, the obviously the, the finished uh, structure, but these old Colosse de Wera buildings on the north side of Parnell Square, adjacent to the Hugh Lane Gallery, will be fully refurbished, restored and refurbished. And behind it, the concept is that there would be a brand new purpose-built city library. We're lucky in Dublin Central in that we have you know, Cabra, Drumcondra, Fibsborough Libraries, and the ILAC Library has wonderful staff as well. But it's as a built structure, it's not a pleasant uh, environment. And this is really uh, exciting and it will be spectacular uh, and a big, exciting project for the North City. And also a great catalyst for re regeneration and refurbishment and restoration of Parnell Square. I am separately working with the Minister for Health and the, and the Rotunda on investment for the Rotunda Hospital, which would also complement um, a, a, a revitalizing of the square. And talking about squares, the uh, other part of the uh, urban regeneration funding uh, money has been set aside for Mount Joy Square. So Mount Joy Square is the last residential uh, Georgian square on the north side and uh, City Council will, with the regeneration, the urban regeneration funding, use it to refurbish the actual park, the community facility and the uh, public uh, space. And similarly, they will do the same with the Five Lamps. The Five Lamps is at the crossroad there of Amian Street and uh, Seville Place and uh, Buckingham Street. And it's a, a landmark in the city, um, but it's actually kind of a, you know, it, the lamp itself is lovely, but it's 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 a bit tired looking and it certainly needs a revamp and the urban regeneration fund will also support that regeneration but the the one project and i could talk about all these projects i suppose for for quite a, a while and they're all very exciting um but the one that i decided to just focus on a bit for today was is the proposal for moore street and i suppose the reason i chose to focus on this one today is because it's very timely long overdue, but finally very timely, because this week uh, the Ministerial Moore Street Advisory Group, uh, on which Emer and myself were both members, um, completed its report to the Minister. And the report basically uh, gives a plan for a state-led rejuvenation of the street market, and also for a restoration of the National Monument and the creation of a 1916 uh, commemorative museum. This is long overdue. Uh, it was back in, I think, 2007 that uh, 14 to 17 uh, were designated as a national monument. 14 to 17 are, are these properties here. They're quite modest, but they are the place from which the leaders of 1916 surrendered. So it was the, it was the last headquarters of the leaders of 1916. And the National Monument site includes also the, the yards to the back here. And anybody who's been down Moore Street itself, the street market in any recent times know that, well, the traders haven't been out in over a year really because of COVID, but before that, the dereliction on the street um, had really reduced footfall and the street market, the, the, the traders themselves couldn't earn uh, a living from it. So the commitment from the Moore Street Advisory Group report is that one, a government has allocated 12 million um, for a rejuvenation of the street 
and for the creation of a 1916 uh, commemorative museum. And the priorities as were set out in the advisory group report are for an implementation, uh, immediate uh, prioritization of the street market and the, the 1916 museum. Mary, a, can I just interrupt for one moment and just say that uh, the street traders were on the group as well and everything um, that they participated was reflected within this um, advisory group and they're in full agreement of, of this. Thank you, Mary. Sorry. I think that is, I think that it's a really good point, well made. Uh, so the, the Moore Street Advisory Group, it wasn't just Emer and myself, there was Emer, there was myself, there was representatives from the Moore Street traders, and there was representatives of the relatives of 1916, and there were representatives from City Council, uh, the executive functions, the Department of Heritage, and it really important that uh, it did have cross-party uh, support and a consensus uh, on, the, on the final report. There's two other big potential development proposals that will impact on Moore Street. Both of them are subject to planning applications in the future. One is the Metrolink, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. And the second big proposal is a proposal from Hammerson's. Hammerson's uh, own an awful lot of the surrounding property, private property, uh, the properties that surround the Moore Street National Monument to the rear and from on O'Connell Street, north of Henry Street, almost as far as Parnell Street, they, they own most of that property. They have uh, proposals to do regen a redevelopment of the site that would involve a provision of office space residential accommodation i think it's about 95 residential units um, some retail a reduced amount of retail hotel and uh, some other cultural spaces they're talking about making six planning applications and uh, they're in the process of, I believe, finalizing three of those applications, but none of the applications have yet been lodged and they will all obviously be subject to the, the regular um, planning process. So I, I make mention of them because they're important, they would have an impact. But I guess the good news and the most important news is that there is going to be a state-led re regeneration of both the street market and the creation of a 1916 commemorative museum. And what I'm going to share with you now in a couple of slides is the, the concept that has been uh, proposed by the Irish Heritage Trust. And Her the Heritage Trust obviously is um, familiar to us all, a part of uh, the OPW and operates heritage sites uh, all around the country. And they put forward a proposal that ha has been endorsed by the, more, the Ministerial Advisory Group that, would, uh, that proposes to preserve the, the National Monument, to make it secure, and, but to preserve it and protect it uh, and use it in a way that is authentic to its original uh, built uh, structure. Um, it would, it, it proposes creating a commemorative center using both the rear of the property and the actual uh, four, uh, the, the, the 14 to 17 uh, uh, buildings. Uh, they want to have a space for a permanent displays and museum, but also a space for education. And um, it's the buildings themselves are, are quite modest. I can show you a bit more. But the theme that they are proposing is that it would be a theme of rags, rebellion and rebirth. So talking about three different stages and, and giving voice to all of those who um, were on Moore Street. Uh, so the, the leaders, obviously, but also the, their volunteers, the supporters, the street traders um, coming them on. And it's uh, three phases they've identified for RAGS, Rebellion and Rebirth. The RAGS being the pre-1916, the development of the Moore Street Market, then 1916 and the actual rebellion, which is obviously a, a very dominant um, element of, of, of the street and of the history of the street. And then post-1916 and the rebuilding of the city uh, in its aftermath. Um, so they, they have presented, and, and this concept has been endorsed and supported by the advisory group, that they would have the 14 to 17 Moore Street as the actual commemorative uh, centre. 
And if any of you have been to the Tenement Museum on Henrietta Street, that's a really fabulous experience. Or I know in, in New York, the, um, the Tenement Museum down on the Lower East Side, similar buildings, actually very modest, tight. They, they don't lend themselves to big groups. But in many respects, that I think leads to a more intimate and, and more um, informative uh, a visit. Uh, so the idea is, is that they would retain the buildings uh, in their authentic fabric and that people would get the experiential um, uh, trip in back into history. Uh, there would be permanent displays and some temporary exhibitions and the commemorative space would be protected. Um, the, they are also, though, because they are small buildings and they will only accommodate relatively small groups at a time, uh, proposing that there would be two complementary um, walking trails or walking tours. And this little map here on the left, I hope you can see it, 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 it basically indicates the potential routes. And I suppose the evacuation trail is named after, I suppose, uh, our to, to trigger in people's minds the evacuation that the leaders made from the GPO. This would be the GPO here, and they made their evacuation onto Henry Place and Moore Lane here, and then Moore Street, and entered the back of the buildings. And then also a, a complimentary commemorative trail that would have plaques that uh, O'Reilly Parade here. This is Parnell Street here. The plaques would indicate and inform um, uh, visitors and tourists um, as to the events and what transpired and, and, and what was experienced uh, in 1916. I think it's a fabulous proposal. Uh, I think the Irish Heritage Trust have a really strong track record at operating really good quality heritage um, experiences. Uh, it's incredibly important that the state leads on this, that the state has made the investment and will make the investment and will operate uh, this historic uh, heritage uh, facility. And I think it's a place that will be visited, not just by us in, in Dublin Central and, and, and people from around the country, but I truly believe it will attract uh, tourists internationally as well. I think there's an awful lot of interest uh, in the States and in the UK and in other parts of the world in our history and in the history of the birth of our Republic and 1916. And while the GPO has a lovely museum and all of that, this is, is going to be something truly unique, something truly, um, you know, you couldn't create it if you wanted. I had the privilege of a number of years ago visiting the inside of the properties when we got the, the government at the time uh, to buy the properties and the National Museum properties. And it is like stepping back in time. It is um, really special. And I think it's fantastic that uh, the state is going to uh, deliver this, uh, secure them, uh, repair them uh, sensitively and reopen them and, and bring this history to, to life for everyone. So it's um, a great and exciting uh, proposal and, and one that's great for Dublin Central, obviously, but also for the rest of the country. And just, uh, Emer touched on it, and I, and I think she's absolutely right. It's spot on the, the market as well. Uh, before I was appointed to the Shannon, I was chairing and set up the DCC expert group uh, that produced a report to define the future of street trading uh, on Moore Street. And Emer continued that work when she was co-opted to the city council. And the report, it's on my website, it's on city council's website. Um, it made 20 recommendations and I'm not going to go through all 20 of them, but there are things around, some of the things are quite basic, you know, toilets and the stalls, but also about diversity, diversity in the products. There's about 17 traders left, which is very sad because there was at one time, you know, well over 70. Um, so the hours of operation and, and the days of operation as well, but, Really importantly, the City Council has committed uh, to have an implementation plan and there will be a City Council monitoring group and we're hoping that City Council will be able to 
kick off the implementation of the recommendations of the report as soon as the COVID restrictions start to lift and bring life back onto the street. So it's uh, long overdue, but at least now there's money and there's a plan and there's a plan that's agreed uh, with the City Council and with the traders. And it's one that has been informed by expert uh, advice as well. So it's very exciting and it will uh, regenerate the street. So that's all the regeneration um, stuff. Uh, I, I suppose the other big issue for us all is housing. And we all, you know, in, in the last election, housing was a, a huge issue. It's one that we as a party, obviously, it's a core value for us. And we're delighted that Fianna Fáil has a housing minister in Dara O'Brien who understands the issue um, and is has actually taken the time to come and visit Dublin Central when he was in opposition. He came with myself and Emer and others, and he understands the acute uh, need for significant state-led uh, housing development in Dublin Central. And since he took office, he's focused on three areas, um, homelessness, uh, social housing, and affordable housing. And in terms of that, the overall housing, he secured the biggest budget in the history of the state for housing this year, 3.3 billion. Uh, 220 million of it is going on homelessness, uh, pro homelessness prevention, um, provision of uh, supports for people who are experiencing homelessness, and most importantly, investment in trying to uh, help people exit homelessness. Unfortunately, in Dublin Central, uh, we have a very high level of homelessness. Some of it is uh, you know, people who are living in, in Dublin Central themselves. But we've also taken a very un, uneven burden, I believe, um, in terms of the amount of emergency homeless facilities uh, we're providing in Dublin Central. And we've, I believe we're providing more in Dublin Central than in any other part of the country or the city. And it's an issue I've addressed with the City Council and I've addressed with um, the Joint Oroctus Committee uh, I'm a member of the Joint Oroctus Committee on Housing and at my request the Joint Oroctus Committee did have a meeting, a public meeting on homelessness and we had experts in and out of that meeting we've uh, published a report with 17 recommendations, um, general recommendations around homelessness uh, around the country but also I suppose there's a couple of them that are specific to Dublin Central not the least of which is a commitment to phase out the operation of private uh, operator homeless facilities in Dublin Central, and also to reverse the over-concentration of homelessness in the North Inner City and Dublin Central generally. Um, the, ghettoization, the ghettoizing of homeless people uh, is not helpful for them, um, and it's not helpful for uh, our community either. So uh, there are two strong recommendations that are included in that report. In terms of social housing, it, you know, we're coming out of a decade of under provision of housing generally, but certainly under provision of social housing in Dublin Central. And I'm glad to say that there is a significant uh, change since Darrell Bryan took office. Uh, there's a target to deliver, I think it's 13,000 um, social houses uh, this year. Obviously, COVID is having a massive impact for every week that COVID shut down construction. It's estimated that we could lose as much as seven or 800 uh, homes in terms of completions. So that has the potential to really extend the housing crisis uh, by about three years. And it's very worrying, but it's something that is being prioritized. And uh, as I say, social housing is a huge priority for our party. It always has been. Um, down through the generations and the building of social housing as in Cabra and Drumcondra and, uh, and Ballybock um, and it's something that I'm glad to say is, has recommenced and, and will be driven on uh, quite significantly in Dublin Central. But there's also a big issue around affordable housing and affordable housing is really I suppose targeted and are, are targeted to address the need for people who are earning above the social housing income thresholds but are finding themselves unable to afford a home. There's been no affordable housing scheme in operation for more than a decade now and this week we launched uh, the affordable housing legislation which will do four things. It will allow for affordable homes to be built on state-owned land, affordable homes to purchase. 
and really affordable homes. So starting at about 160,000 um, euros, uh, affordable homes to rent, again, on state owned lands and uh, social and affordable homes to be provided on private development. So every private development would be required at the moment. There is a, a requirement for 10% social housing, but we want to double that and have a minimum of 20% on all private land developments um, to be social and affordable. And then the final element of the affordable housing bill is one that basically tries to address the fact that there's a lot of people paying more money in rent than what they would in a mortgage at the moment. And uh, it's uh, this shared equity uh, affordable home loan uh, scheme is designed for them uh, to provide them with financial support, financial support for first time buyers to buy a home uh, that they are constrained from a credit perspective uh, from, from purchasing at the moment. So we have a lot of people particularly in Dublin, particularly in Dublin Central, uh, paying more, sometimes paying as, you know, 2,000 maybe in, in rent, uh, they would pay a lot less in a mortgage, but because of their income and the uh, bank lending rules, they're unable to actually bridge that credit gap. The shared equity scheme would, uh, will uh, see the government provide financial support to those first time buyers to buy new build homes in private developments, the government would provide a shared equity loan that will see the state take an equity in their home up to 20 percent and uh, it will be interest free for the first five years. Um, all of these affordable housing measures are new measures. They're all captured in the new affordable housing legislation that Minister uh, Dara O'Brien presented to Cabinet this week and that we will be bringing through uh, the Shannad and the Dáil over the coming weeks and hoping to have implemented and passed by uh, this summer. That is a big piece of work and it will be game changing because it actually changes the state's direction. It changes the direction in terms of his, the last 10 years or so, we've had a market led approach to the provision of housing. This actually is going to change that direction to being a state led approach and create the legislative basis to do that. There are a lot of other issues though around housing. You know, it's a complex issue and there's an awful lot of things going on. So since he took office, he, the Minister banned co-living, um, has indicated that he will be ending the strategic housing developments, but there is a real need to review the build to rent regulations, uh, the rent pressure zones, and uh, a number of other issues with regards to housing. And, and part of that work we're doing in parallel, and there will be a new housing plan for all um, launched this July. and, and I'm inputting to that as, as is Emer and um, our, our local members. So there's a lot going on in housing, but I suppose the question from a Dublin Central perspective is how does this actually translate on the ground? And so Emer, obviously, as a Fianna Fáil City Councillor, and Emer is also Fianna Fáil representative on the City Council's Strategic Housing Policy Committee. Um, is uh, doing great work, I have to say, championing Dublin Central and uh, ensuring that it's high on the City Council's priority list uh, for new developments. So here on this slide, uh, there's a list of some of the developments that are already in train. So these would be City Council-led housing developments in Dublin Central that uh, are being funded uh, by government and uh, in consistent with uh, the government's uh, policies. So there's, it's everything from small developments. Um, some of these in Cabra, let's say, uh, uh, St. Finbar's Court, for example, that's senior citizen housing. Um, 46 units, I think it is, Emer, it's either 46 or 49. Uh, Connock Street, 20. Most of these are actually social housing developments. 46, Mary. 46, is it? So there's 27 uh, projects at the moment. Um, uh, about 1,300 are in planning or under construction already. There's another 1,000 or more uh, in the early stages of development. Um, and then in parallel to all of this, funding has been made available to City Council to uh, refurbish any what they call voids, so any of the vacant boarded up units, there was 120 done last year in Dublin Central, there's a target to do double that uh, this year. Um, City Council obviously is also looking at 
uh, the uh, buy and renew scheme, which is where government provides funding to the local authority to buy derelict properties and to renew them. And we're pushing for a number of those in Cabra and in Drumcondra. Um, and then on top of all of this, what we want to see rolled out is the affordable legislation. We want, once this affordable legislation is passed, for Dublin City Council to take the lead in delivering affordable homes on city council lands. We see a lot of opportunity for it in Dublin Central. There's a number of sites that are in state ownership and that we believe, and Emer and I will both be pushing for, to have delivery of affordable homes, affordable homes both to purchase and rent. I'm getting towards the end here. Uh, I just think it's important we touch on Metrolink uh, because it's a big, huge project coming our way. Um, I suppose the Metrolink project is potentially going to be a 19 kilometer, largely underground, high frequency rail service uh, running from uh, Charlemont on the south side uh, out beyond the airport. From our perspective in Dublin Central, uh, it's, it's going to have a huge impact, not just in construction, but I think, you know, then for generations to come. If you think back, actually, the, the undergrounds and the metros in Paris and London, they're over 100 years old. Um, so we need to be thinking of this project, not just for our time, but, but for future generations to come. As it's proposed at the moment, there's four stops in Dublin Central. There's one here on O'Connell Street at the Carlton site, roughly, I'm, I'm giving you that as a kind of a landmark. Um, it would have an entrance on O'Connell Street. It'll also have an entrance to the rear that'll come out onto Moore Lane and connect over to Moore Street. At least that's what's proposed at the moment. There will be a second stop in Dublin Central at Berkeley Road. Um, they actually call it the Matter Stop, but it's uh, on Berkeley Road, really opposite the old matter. The route then at the moment is proposing to continue up to what they're calling the Glass Nevin stop. It's actually at Crossguns Bridge, uh, where the Des Kelly site is. And the idea is that it would interconnect there with the main line, rail line for Maynooth, and uh, it would potentially be quite a big station there at Cross Guns. The, the proposal, as I say, this is all subject to planning permission, but there is you know, talk about basically the demolition of Des Kelly's and creating a significant plaza. And it, it's, it's a, it will be a very significant intervention. The route then proposes to continue up under uh, Botanic Road and, and up towards uh, Griffith Park uh, and Movi Road and have a stop there at uh, Movi Road not on Nafina's grounds, um, but very close to it. And then to continue on up past Griffith Avenue up into Albert College uh, in, in that vicinity up to Bally Mun. Um, I, I think it's really important, I suppose, just to note that it's a massive infrastructure project. It'll be subject to a railway order application and the uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland uh, has indicated that they intend making an application for a railway order later this year. I have, and Emer has, both of us have met with and uh, worked with uh, residents and property owners along the route. Uh, we have both engaged with uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland. We will continue to do that. We have been pushing and we have a commitment from Transport Infrastructure Ireland that there will be an independent expert assigned to support residents and property owners to engage in the process. And the last indication was they were going to tender on that this month and they would uh, make an announcement as to who the independent expert is as soon as possible. And I've asked that that independent expert is announced and made available well before they actually uh, apply for the railway order um, because I think it's really important. It, this is a huge project and for any lay person, I know I struggle um, with the enormity of it. So, so we're going to need uh, support uh, to, to engage in the process. An issue that I have been pushing them on as well, and Emer has uh, been very supportive and raised this with, the, with TII, is their proposal for a, a intervention shaft in Albert College Park. Uh, it's disappointing that the design, as they have proposed it at the moment, does not uh, propose to have a station at Albert College Park, but proposes to have an intervention shaft 
uh, we think that the project would be greatly enhanced if they put a, a station um, at Albert College Park as opposed to an intervention shaft. But that will all be worked out in, in the planning process. So that's um, that. And I think I did OK on time. Um, that's the update that Imer and myself uh, felt was most appropriate based on the queries that we're receiving, the issues that constituents are raising with us, and we hope that it has provided you all with a good overview of, I suppose, the work that we're doing uh, locally, um, and you know, but also I suppose the commitment that. Uh, Fianna Fáil has uh, to the constituency and the prioritisation that it is giving the constituency in terms of government policy and government funding. And I suppose just in parallel to all of this, Emer is, as the councillor, the only Fianna Fáil representative on the Central Area Committee, but she takes the role very seriously and is working with the other government parties, the representatives from the Green Party and from uh, Fine Gael, as I am working in the Oireachtas. And both of us are dealing with constituents queries, individual queries on a daily basis and meeting with residents groups and interest groups in the area. So if anybody has any questions, our contact details, we, we take questions now, but our contact details are available and, I, and I'll leave that slide up there. Um, and uh, I can put that up at the end again. We'll post the, the, the recording and, and the video to uh, our social media channels and our contact details are, are available. But maybe Neva, are there any questions? Yeah, Mary, um, Leo McNamee. Uh, regarding regeneration, re regeneration, the plans are all very impressive, but I imagine they will take some time to deliver. Are there any short-term plans for Fibsborough, Parnell Square, Mountjoy Square, Dorset Street under the COVID mobility programme? Some of the footpath widening in the city centre has made a big difference and it would be good to see increased pedestrian space beyond the city centre core. Yeah, there has been, Leo, thanks for your question. And uh, Imer, you, you can jump in at, at any point if you want. Leo, I think you're specifically, I think your question is specifically asking us about uh, the mobility, the COVID mobility and the extending of the footpaths and the, um, the cycle routes. And there was an amount of that done initially. Uh, there has been some significant enhancements. When you look at Parnell Street and if you come up Parnell Square, I don't know when you were most recently there, but over COVID times, there's certainly been uh, a, a big improvement. Uh, if you now want to cycle up O'Connell Street and come up uh, towards uh, Fibsborough, you can, there's a dedicated cycle route coming up Parnell Square, coming up the east side of Parnell Square, up Blessington Street, and uh, Fibsborough has had extra uh, space created as well. Uh, it's still not a done, it's still not a finished deal. I didn't touch on it today, Leo, but uh, there, in parallel to all of this, there is, two, there is a, a Royal Canal Greenway project and maybe we should have talked about that I'm sorry um, it's a big project uh, you will be aware of the upgrading of the Royal Canal route from Spencer Dock as far as Newcomen Bridge uh, the next phase is from Newcomen Bridge up to uh, Cross Guns and then from Cross Guns up to uh, Broom Bridge and Ashton so that is going in parallel, but also, Leo, uh, as part of the urban regeneration, there's funding to improve the cycle route from Broadstone up to the Royal Canal, uh, which would be the Fibsborough route. So um, coming on at Broadstone there and coming on the Royal Canal spur, you'll also be familiar with, I'm, I'm thinking, Leo, if, if, if you're cycling the in improvements that have been put in place on Constitution Hill. So now when you're cycling up Church Street and up uh, Constitution Hill, Broadstone, there's, there's dedicated, segregated um, cycle space. So it's, it's evolving, I suppose, Leo, I'd say if there's any particular pinch points that you want us to look to have addressed, drop Emer an email, drop me an email, and Emer can get them into the works program. Um, I think, I think Mary, sorry for interrupting there. I think you're right. Um, Leo, it's, it's evolving all of the time. And, and please don't hesitate to email me if there is, uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. 
Mary. Um, question from John Fitzgerald regarding Metrolink. Will it be train carriages or Lewis type trains? The idea is, John, that it would be underground subway type, you know, like like a New York subway or a, or a London tube. So train, the idea is it'll be high frequency and uh, uninterrupted. And the projection is, is that the travel times uh, from Swords to the city centre would reduce by, would be reduced to around 20, 25 minutes. So it's just, it really is a city-wide project, but we included it because we thought we're getting a lot of questions about it and we've been engaging with a lot of residents on it. So we thought it was best to at least touch on it. Okay. And then um, from Dave Byrne, massive plans for Moore Street. Uh, presently, it's totally run down. Would funding be allocated to improve the shop frontage? Yes, Dave. Um, good question. So... Uh, I may not have mentioned, but government has given 12 million and uh, that will immediately address, some of the funding will be immediately used for the street market, uh, but a good chunk of the funding is going to go into the shop fronts of uh, 14 to 17 and not just the shop fronts, Dave, but the actual buildings themselves and the space to the rear of those buildings and the surrounding street area and the streetscape to create the trails. I didn't include the Hammersons proposals because they're not government proposals, they're not Fianna Fáil proposals, and I didn't think it was appropriate for us to uh, include them. I, I would have had, we would have had to, you know, engage with brought Hammersons to this. Or anyway, we, we we're not going to present um, a, a private developer's uh, proposal. It's it's not uh, our proposal. We have seen uh, their proposals, and uh, they have. Uh, it appears quite advanced um, design concepts and planning uh, design proposals that they intend lodging for planning permission. And, and those proposals do uh, present as being very sympathetic to the architectural conservation um, status of, of the area and would be very sympathetic to the historical fabric of the area and would bring about a restoration a restoration where appropriate in some instances there is requirement for a complete rebuilding but any of the protected structures any of the historical structures any of the historical fabric all of the presentations that they've shared with us and with others are consistent with a, an architectural conservation approach to new development and regeneration. Okay, Mary, I've got a housing question for you from Brian O'Sullivan. Just to clarify, reshared equity scheme is the max equity the state takes 20%. Some news reports said 30%. Also, can a first time buyer benefit from both the shared equity scheme and the help to buy? Great question, Brian. And actually, you know, Brian, if you want, we can send you on a, a, a little information leaflet afterwards, uh, because I have to say there's been such incredibly inaccurate reporting of the affordable housing scheme. It's been very distressing for a lot of constituents uh, who contacted Ema and myself, uh, people very concerned. But to clarify your questions, it's 20% is the shared equity, uh, Brian. And uh, it is based on first time buyers borrowing up to a maximum of the central bank, what the central bank rules will allow them, and then the state taking 20% uh, equity share in the home, which is, as I say, interest free for the five years and then repayable over the lifetime of the mortgage. And the shared equity more element of it will be you'll access that like if you're going to a bank and you're getting a mortgage from a bank and you've reached the maximum of your borrowing from the bank the bank will then provide the shared equity element they'll be the administrators of the shared equity uh, element so yes and it can be combined with the rebuilding ireland loan okay um and then question from dave Byrne: as a resident of dalcassian downs i have a big interest in the metro project uh i.e plant station block to be built right beside one particular block of apartments? Yeah, Dave, I, I, I thanks for your question. And Ema and I have had queries from residents in Dalcassian, but also in, in others, just right in that area, Prospect and, and other areas. Uh, there's, I suppose, as I said, it's a huge infrastructure project and it'll have massive impact. So we're 
we're, we're happy to continue to work with you and with all of the residents and engage, I suppose, until we actually see the railway order, Dave, um, and we get the independent expert. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to progress or to do much more, but we're happy to meet with you, talk to you about the specifics of it, absolutely, and we're available to support and engage with all of the residents along the route, so no problem whatsoever. Okay, so that's all the questions in the chat for now. I don't know if anyone has any other questions they want to pop into the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and uh, ask Mary or Emer. Doesn't seem so. Well, that's great. It must be the fine weather oh. outside. Everybody's thinking, I just want to get out. It's sunny and it's warm. Um, look, I suppose just from Emer and myself, oh, is there a light flashing there, Neve? Is there? Yeah, there is a query there from um, Fumzili. Um, Hi there. Several times I've complained to Threshold about what my landlord, about the treatment from her landlord, and I've been told that I should be patient with him. What do I do as, as this brings me distress? Okay, so maybe we might take that one offline. I mean, tra uh, without knowing the details of it, uh, yeah. I, I, and I suppose it's not appropriate to discuss it in a public forum like this. Yeah, maybe Fasidi, if we could come back to you offline on that. I don't and want to. You, you, sorry, Mary, if you'd like to give me a call, um, no problem, or email me or anything like that, and and let's work from there. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I want to thank everybody uh, for joining our call today. Um, it's a real honour for Emer and I to represent the, uh, the party and the constituency and our community where we both grew up and, and we take the job very seriously. We're very proud to represent the area, uh, but we can only be as good as, as you lot keep us on our toes. So please feel free to contact us and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again soon. And don't hesitate, please, to contact us. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you.